Welcome, everybody, to Face the Facts. It's nice to see you, or it's also nice for you to be able to listen to us as well on our program here. Uh, I am Nick Face, and we have lots to talk about in our big four teams in this lovely land of New England. Phil Healy, welcome in. You definitely got the memo. It's definitely Red Day. For those that can't see us, it, we have our there you go. we are in our festive colors and everything for today. But I might not want to be wearing red right now because I think you know where I'm leading into. Because as we're taping this program right now, I am enraged. I am fuming. I am disgusted. I am. I didn't really sleep much last night because of how worked up I was about this. But right around almost twelve thirty in the morning. On this lovely day, breaking news popped into my phone and it claimed and is now factual and true that Xander Bogarts has signed an 11 year, $280 million deal. Not with the Red Sox. Of course not. Of course not on the Red Sox with the San Diego Don Orsillo Padres. I could not be more insulted as a fan. I could not be more disgusted with our ownership. But I want to say on a positive note, I think Xander Bogarts deserves a round of applause because this is not to blame on Xander Bogarts' part. Absolutely not. He got paid and that was what he was supposed to get done. So kudos to him. I have lost any sorts of love. I have lost any sort of care on the Boston Red Sox. I hope that they burn in shame. And I hope that John Henry's yacht sinks in the Boston Harbor. That's how fury infuriated I am with our clown show of an organization when it comes to top level, John Henry, Tom Warner, Sam Kennedy, and your idiot moron baseball ops clown boy, Heim Bloom. I want to throw it over now to Phil. Let's talk about it. Let's see what direction this team is headed, but I'm training in my red. I'm, I'm officially a San Diego Padre fan at this <laughs> moment in time. Yeah. I mean, Hey, that with Don Arcillo, I mean, you know what I mean? That's a good combo. But yeah, it is I, a good Nick, combo. I am. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know. Like this to me, I thought because also there were reports yesterday that Bogarts and the Sox were reaching an agreement. Tying it up. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, that's you know what? That's I great. hate. I'm, I hate being played. I hate. Yeah. It. They played yeah. every last yeah. one of us fans because I also was under the assumption like they screwed up royally. If Bogarts yeah, was going to be with this team, should have taken care of it spring training. 100%. Mm -hmm. They punted on it. They screwed up royally and they got the, themselves into this situation that it is today. So I had hope. I had faith. I had positivity towards this whole thing that was happening with Xander coming back. From reports we heard yesterday, that's all we heard. Coming back. Don't worry about it. Waiting. Dot the I's, cross the T's. And boom. Yeah, I don't uh well, play like a fiddle. Yeah, a little bit. I will say uh also we need you to get up, Nick. We need you to get up. We need you to be you need your chest up. We need your yes, we need you to get so the graphics doesn't hit your the graphics don't hit you right in the mouth. Um I know, I know Tom was in a seat he was saying earlier, so now now we have to be oh that's good. Uh oh, no, yeah, man, go. I, I don't know I'm if sinking we like the Red Sox. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if we were played by Bogarts, we were played by the Sox. I don't know what, but it's just you know what, man? You're right. They should have had that handled leading into the 2022 season. Uh, he was one of your cornerstone guys. Anyone here now who says, like, we're better off without him is lying to themselves and everyone else. Listen, we needed to sign him. We definitely need to sign Devers now. I don't know what they're doing. I thought the Jansen signing was pretty decent. But then I, I was, was happy hearing, on that yesterday. Yeah, I was happy about it. But then I heard numbers got about, closer. like, you got a closer. Not a bad player. He's been declining a little bit. He's older. But... I'll take uh, it. I don't think it's the worst. But then I was nope. uh, I, I was reading and I heard stuff about how now like the the pitch clock is coming out. 
And he's one of those guys who takes his time. And apparently in the playoffs, he can't hold a person uh, on base to save on his base. life. So, I mean, that's, I mean, I guess we'll deal with that. But you know what? I, uh, man, I don't know, man. That seemed like it would be, like, that's the thing, too. I remember, and, and Aaron Judge stayed with the Yankees because the Yankees, and Yankees were, weren't stupid. They were like, we need to keep this guy for so many reasons. Mm-hmm. And they paid through the nose. The Red Sox uh, or management, uh, uh, what's his name, wasn't uh, wasn't having John it. John Henry, to, Sam uh, Kennedy, Henry. Heim Bloom. They needed to buy another. Was, show. They're buying a lacrosse league, apparently, or something like that. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't. It just seems like this is. It's not like you're trading Nomar to get a uh, the last piece of the puzzle to win a championship. You're just mortgaging off future for god knows what not even we didn't even get anything for him we didn't get a damn thing for him that's the thing too that's so frustrating oh all right yeah i'm with you the first time i think in a while mark it down on calendars i'm with nick 100 percent on those i am happy that you mentioned nomar because nomar actually ties into this whole discussion that we're having right here so you're actually kind of hit it right where i was going next the the thing about it is this ownership group now has franchise players, your cornerstones, your foundations of your team. They have exiled and got rid of them, not for the better, for the worse. And now you have to, as a fan base, deal with another situation, just like Mookie, just like John Lester, just mm-hmm. like Nomar, just like Pedro, just like Derek Lowe, they're gone. Every Red Sox fan should be outraged right now. It's not my money. It's yep. not my money. It's your moron owner who rather go buy soccer teams and uh, pickleball teams and hockey teams that he has no business apart. There is not another owner in professional sports who has, what do we got? Four championships. We have four championships and he is despised in this city. Despised. You can't find that anywhere else. Look at Robert Kraft. Robert Robert Kraft is loved. Loved. They got all the championships and everything, but they take care for the most part, their players outside of really Tom Brady. Outside of Tom Brady. Outside of him. Hmm. Now you have a a situation much like this that you don't know what direction ahead. And I will say, you mentioned Devers. Funny. Funny you mentioned Devers. Because guess what? He's gone too. He's gone. Just put it in your minds, folks. He's gone. He's done. He is not signing here with this team. Not after they just took... The cornerstone mm-hmm. of the team, your franchise basically, is gone. Yeah. And the media wants to tell us fans, oh, now they they, they must sign Devers. They have they, they, don't worry about it. He's here. Bullshit. Bullshit. I don't like swearing on shows, no, but you right. know what? This is exactly what they want you to believe. Oh, yeah, we're going to get him. Don't worry, fans. He'll be here. We'll give him a deal. You got another year of that. You got another year of that. I'm not buying one <laughs> ounce of what they're selling. They could try he, and sell. They can't. They couldn't even sell me Swampland in Virginia and want me to believe it. Do you think? No, here's. Let me throw this at you. Let's just say for the sake of it, for what the thing actually was. Let's yeah. just say they did have a deal in principle or they were working on it. And they had some. But San Diego at the zero hour just kind of came in and gave him something better. Um, but I guess the would the Red Sox have to match? I don't know. Uh, but now Devers has all the cards. Devers can be, well, you know what? Who knows? I I don't think Devers is going to go for cheap. He sees this. I'm sure no. he's just like, oh, he got this money. I'm not going to. I mean, he, no one was giving a hometown dis- discount yeah, anyways. Seconds, but yeah, no worries. No one was giving a hometown discount anyways. No. <laughs> but oh, I'm going to uh, mute Nick. But no one was giving a dis, uh, discount. Devers wasn't. Bogart wasn't. Uh, Mookie Betts wasn't when he was up. Uh, when he was up for negotiation. 
But I would like to think Devers has is holding all the cards for this one when negotiation starts up again with him. And if it hasn't, then maybe um, who knows? I don't know. I think my point is Devers. I think to, to re-sign Devers is going to be even more expensive than it was. I think if you would have signed Bogarts, you would have had a you would have not had to pay as much for Devers. I think now that uh, Bogarts is gone. I think there's more desperation on your. Maybe there isn't desperation on the Red Sox count. Maybe there isn't. Maybe they're kind of they're fine I, with it. I, I think that they. But I don't settled. know. But the I don't, more I like, think about it, I think they yeah. don't care anymore. They I don't think, think they that, don't care. You think they don't care? I I think that they've packed it in. I think yeah. that it's four championships. This is all gravy to them now. I they're mean that is pretty great. Give the big. They want to operate like Tampa and the Oakland A's. Yeah. They don't want to take care of any of their big players. They don't care. They're going to go on the cheap. Sure. That's why I am. I don't even think that they fill the shortstop void from Bogarts now. I don't. I don't. Well, I don't who think, would they? Who would they put there? That's the thing. I think Carlos Correa is going to go to the Giants. I think he's not going to be a part yeah. as much as that would be somewhat of a fix. I'd say. I yeah. think Dansby Swanson goes back to the Braves. I don't see them. I don't see the Red Sox going after that. Your starting shortstop next year will be either Trevor Story moving over there or Kike Hernandez at short. That's what's going to happen. There you and go. And they're going to try and sell fans on, oh, don't you worry, Bogarts is gone, but we have such a great team. Go buy a brick. Go buy a seat. Go yeah. buy advertising on our green monster. Oh, yada, yada, yada. Go buy Nesson 360. Go buy it. Go buy it for $30 a month because we got the best team when, in truth, they are the worst team in the AL East now. They are more embarrassing than the Baltimore Orioles. Ooh. The Orioles were decent towards the end, too. That's I have a, more faith in the ba even... Baltimore Orioles right now than I do with the Boston Red Sox. That's Man. sickening. <laughs> They did sign a, yeah. a Japanese, uh, a, apparently they call him uh, Yoshi. They did, yeah. So he's supposed to be some outfield guy that's going to be a leadoff hitter. They're calling him like a Ichiro Suzuki type. I can't be bought into, ja no, no offense to J J uh, Japanese players and everything. This has nothing to do about their race or anything like that. But the Red Sox history of any Japanese players working out is very poor. You've had a few examples which have led to Hideki Okajima. You had a Deo Nomo who was decent. Mm -hmm. uh, you had Daisuke for Daisuke. a couple seasons and then went away. But yeah. uh, Junichi Tozawa, I could put in there a little bit. But oh yeah, Tozawa. Of that, and also, uh, did you already mention the most famous of on the uh, Red Sox? of closers? Oh, Koji. I forgot. Koji. How can Koji, I about Koji? Koji saved that season. Yes, they he did. pretty much was your bullpen. But he then was it in like 2013. Yeah. And I uh, feel I feel terrible now that I forgot. No, How no. Can I... Koji was amazing. He was amazing. But uh, I but I also think that's I think that's a usual trend, kind of just like uh like Canadian football, if you want to put it like that. If you, I just or don't like want, any yeah. I just don't want this to turn into a Rosny Castillo type thing again. And that's hey, where I am I remember that sadly definitely. feeling things are gonna go. They could so I, I have lost my hope. I've lost my faith. I've lost my anything for the Red Sox. Uh go root for the Padres, folks. Go root. You got Bogarts, they got a heck of a team there. Gonna be interesting to see what they do with Tatis now. If the Padres, do they trade them? Do they trade with the Red Sox? I I don't know. I don't know what direction they're going to head right now after this colossal mistake that was made. And you should not be blaming Bogarts, folks. I don't want to hear one thing about, oh, Xander no. should have stayed with the team. No if way. You have, I mean, I'll even tell you to be quite honest with you. If there was a six-year 160 deal versus an 11-year 280 million, I'm going with 11 280. That's oh, not that, even a comparison. Is that what? Uh, That's what, that they're, what they're saying, saying? that it might have been, might have been. Yeah. Worth, so I mean, honestly, you you do the eleven year, even if he doesn't fulfill the whole thing, you either trade him off or you're just like, I mean, we're still eating Pedroia money, Pedroia money, I I, I I think, and David Price money, I think. There's so much dead money on the books. Yeah, yeah, I get not it. They don't money. want. To, That's I, what the thing is. It's not yeah, our money. I know, but it's I mean, moron owner whose money it is. Well, I mean. Listen, Go sell I'm, your yacht. 
it's a business and that's fine and Danny, but it's just kind of like, um, I don't know. This just seemed like this was a, a no brainer. You know what I mean? To maintain identity. I, I, and I, I completely agree. Yeah. I'm with you, man. I want to go positive. I need positive <laughs> and the best positive that we have. And it's really a coin flip on what we want to go with. I'll give it because Phil likes the Celtics the best right sure. now. I want to go Celtics in our second slot. They mopped the floor with yeah. the Phoenix Suns, who are the best team in the West. And there was just co complete domination. The Celtics do not even have Robert Williams still back. You have so much to love on this team and so much to like after that beginning of the season where I'm Udoka, you know, was suspended from everything. And you yeah. had Robert Williams down and you had Daniel Gal Gallinari going to be out. Yeah. This this team is a wagon, as they say, in mm -hmm. the NBA. And I'm excited for this group. The one detriment I will tell you is listening to that game last night. You all know Phil oh, and no. Tom from our past shows that we, we've done. NBC Boston, I would like you to please listen to this statement very clearly because you have a championship caliber team and you don't even have an announcer that can go on the road and do play-by-play -play for your team. I'm just willing to throw my resume into the mix because if you're going to continue huh. to put uh, Scalabrini as your play-by-play -play announcer, I'm just going to mute the TV and put the radio on. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't, how do you not? I don't understand how you don't. It's a care joke. For, what? No, come on. Scal, he is. Scal is house are fantastic. Scal but, is fine when he color commentates. Okay. I can't even can't do listen a play -by -play. for a minute with him doing play by play. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is disgusting. Dis that's got to <laughs> stop. That's very strong. Disgusting. That's very disgusting. I hope Brian Scalabrini sees oh, this and gets a reality check that he's never uh, going to be and will never be the next Mike Gorman or well, Johnny Most. Let me let me let me excuse I my could partner. Be that. No. Let me excuse my partner Mr. Scalabrini. Uh <laughs> uh white mom but may i excuse uh nick for this one no i, I listen scow and i love when they do like a scow or perk or uh scow or, or um in this case eddie house and when i i think scow is amazing because he's a player who's been there and he gives you so much when you're watching it and as he a goes through, commentator well i i think he's great as a play-by-play -play too i actually mm. really do i think he gives you quite a bit and also last night was kind of a crazy game not a it joke of a game but yeah. it was just kind of like i was like i was pa uh, like wrapping gifts and doing some packaging in my basement i had i was watching on my phone and i you know and i got to after i'm like oh wow they're up at 27 yep. then i didn't watch until like there was like six minutes left in the third i'm like oh man they're up by 40 and it's just kind of like they really and at that point it was like the game was, was very impressive the die was cast yeah no they listen and, and scow and uh, house put it brilliantly or uh succinctly they uh their second unit will demolish any second unit like there's no contest right now and yep. just knock on wood you have about six months left of this to go because we're talking um you know until june till the first or second week of june you have to keep this up so uh let's see i like jalen brown said it best the other night uh, it might have, i think it was last night he said it he's got to stay healthy so, I mean, that's kind of like, and they have enough knock to. Knock on wood, health. Yeah, exactly. And once again, knock on wood. And Robert Williams is looking to come back soon. I actually Before think. Before Christmas, will... they're saying. Yeah. And, that, you know, I actually think that'll ruin a bit of the dynamic, if I'm being honest. I think he'll add a, he'll add a, another great dimension, as he always does, to the defense. Because he's like a strong safety out there. He's fantastic when he, defensively. He doesn't, he, ha he can have an outside shot. He, no way can he shoot the three. And what they're doing right now with the five out, which means pretty much every person is on the perimeter, essentially. Uh, he, I don't necessarily think he can do that, but it'll be it'll be different when he's in there. And I'm interested to see what they do, but I actually don't think right. it'll be as they'll just be. It'll be different. We'll see what happens. But it is kind of insane that he's not on the team in there. They're, doing they're blowing as well as the they're doors. Doing. Yeah, I mean, and listen, that game against the Heat on this past Friday night was a great playoff game and an example of you know what they still can lose if they don't. If they don't uh, uh, play the right defense, if they or if they turn the ball over, you need reality there. checks now and then. It's yep. good for adversity. It's good to kind of build that 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 team camaraderie with big teams that 
you got to take it out. And that gets yeah. me to our Boston Bruins because both teams are actually on that Western Conference kind of trip. That's right. So at the nines right, and yeah. the 10 o'clock at night. The Bruins are just, it's like I said, it's a coin flip. I love this Bruins team. I couldn't like them more. And one of the things that's been such a dynamic change that they've had is the addition of, or the re-addition of having David Krejci back, Patrice Bergeron obviously back in the fold. They're getting some great depth from some of their young guys like Trent Frederick and Thomas Nosek. They're, they're identity type guys. This team believes, this team knows that they've got to, their backs are against the wall. It's, it's Stanley Cup or die for this team right now. And they're getting production on all sorts of levels. My biggest love of this team, though, right now, Phil, I don't know how much you've watched it, and Tom and I have talked about A little this. bit. Um, Actually, ever since you were telling me about it. The third line with Charlie Coyle, Trent Frederick, and Taylor Hall dropping down to the third line, that's your that, that's a death wish. I'm that's sorry. It's, it's a death, death wish. That's death. It is that stacked. Taylor Hall has been on a mission this past week. Even against the Vegas Knights, who they lost to on Monday night at home. Well, he um, got a shootout. His own shootout, rebound, right? He got his own it, rebound. It is unbelievable. Down. These mm-hmm. NHL teams don't have a match for that. When you got the best line with Bergeron and Marchand with DeBrusque, and then you go to the second with Zaka and Pasta and Krejci. Oh, yeah. boy. Oh, boy. I, I, am, I, I couldn't like a team more right now. I couldn't. This is This is... This is better than 2011's uh, ride they had so far. So I'm feeling it. Stay healthy. Keep going. Just keep dominating. They got Friday night game against the uh, Arizona, no, Phoenix. It used to be the Arizona uh, Coyotes. And then Sunday is a big game. That's against Vegas at home at uh, home for Vegas. So that will be cool with seeing Cassidy again. Cassidy came back on Monday night. Nice tribute and everything for him. And uh, we wish the Bruins all the best. Very quickly before we wrap up our show, the very sad, pathetic New England Patriots, <laughs> did I say that loud enough, mm-hmm. are 6-6. Six and six. Let's just put it this way. I think Bill Belichick has lost his touch. I do. I think he's lost his touch. I think that it's time to start really thinking long-term which direction this team is held. As much as Max Jones, performance-wise, has been abysmal, I got to look at the coaching staff as my first thing that I'm going to be looking at if I'm going to be blaming anything for how poor this real season has been. Matt Patricia still being the offensive coordinator is is a disgrace, and that never should have been signed off on at the beginning of the season. Um, I'm hearing rumblings that the Patriots are, or actually Robert Kraft is infuriated with what this team is doing right now to the point where I've even heard from um, Peter King, who's a very respected football analyst and Burt Breer in the NFL that Kraft is as as mad as he's ever been and might even be willing to part with Bill Belichick at the end of the season because of what we've seen since 20, pretty much uh, 2020 after Brady. So maybe, maybe, maybe Mr. 81, who is 81 years old, Robert Kraft, Will um, be stepping in and calling the shots right now. So I'm curious to see where things head. But right now, the Patriots, they have – who do we got next? Is it the is it the Arizona uh, Arizona, next? I think on Sunday. It was going to be – oh, no, I think the – yes, it's Arizona. It's Arizona, it's a Monday night and I too? think it goes Raider. Yes, it's Monday yeah, then, night. And then Raiders. Then the Raiders. Then, and I think it's the Bengals. Mm-hmm. And then it's, I think, the San Bills. Francisco? Oh, the Bills, yeah. Or do we already then, play the Bills twice? We know we play them once, so we're going to play them again. Bills I think maybe and then Miami. Christmas, we have yeah. to finish out. The well, don't season. we have San Francisco too? I don't know. No, no, we don't. No, we don't. No. Poor Jimmy Garoppolo, by the way. Oh yeah, did he? He got, got injured again. Yeah, he's out. Is, yeah, he's, he's out, out for, for the rest like, of the season. Yeah, surgery uh, and everything is coming for him. So. He can't stay on the field, man. No, he cannot. Injury prone. Um, the other rumblings that we've heard. Uh, I don't know how did you if you saw Monday night's comeback victory from Brady. I, I didn't that was see amazing. it. I heard it. Yeah, that it was amazing. It was like three and a half minutes left against the Saints. Right. The Saints yeah. just can't beat the Bucks to save their. It's it's crazy. They used to. They used to, but Quite now a it's a d- different animal. Yeah, sure. I don't know what the future is going to hold for Brady. Obviously, now with Giselle not being uh, in the fold and him still wanting to be Father Time and still play and produce in a system. Mm-hmm. 
I would be willing to sit, you know, Mac Jones still is on a rookie contract kind of thing. And he's still available till 2025. Take a seat, kid. Let Tom have his storybook ending. Finish with the Patriots and ride off into glory. You're not, listen, it's funny I was going to mention this. You're not the first one who I've heard this from. A buddy of mine had read something from, I forget who it was, but he said, and he was kind of jovial. He was like, listen, because, you know, Brady is only on a one-year deal, I think, with the Bucks, So he could come over and just finish it out. Yep. Well, this last year, and you know what? I I think that's a great way for everyone to go. If they have the one last uh, season, he one comes back. One last Yeah. And you know what? I I actually don't think Mac Jones, to your point about him, you use you throw on the term abysmal quite a bit, but I don't think uh but you also give credit uh to everything falling on the coordinators, which I think is the big thing. But I don't think Mac Jones hasn't been as bad. I think actually he's shown a bit of promise here and there, but yeah, he's it's not been, on him. what's the word? Passable. Yeah, I mean, listen, he's made some decent plays and he's no by no means, I think, the player he should be. Uh, and maybe he'll get there. I don't know. But I, I mean, I actually, I'm more inclined to put Zappy in there. Just uh, the Zappy Bailey just seems to have seems a neck. like he's just a spark. Yeah, a little bit. But hey, whatever. Say Sarah. I, I'm with you, though. I think Brady for another year. Why not? And we're spoiled enough. Why not give us that one last? Spoil uh, us again. Yeah, exactly. One last. So time. we covered a lot here on our show within our 30 minutes of time. Everybody was uh, had their part uh, you, for World Cup action. Yes, the USA was done and everything, but I didn't really watch much of it. I don't know how much you did. I'm not much of a, a little big bit. soccer fan, but I I, I think it's kind of cool. Was, it was interesting. It was. But I'm glad we're kind of out because we don't deserve to. We didn't deserve to. <laughs> we, be there. Well, no, we don't, and that's like the thing. Yeah. That's the world. I mean, um, actually, I who I forget who's in there now. I think it's so span is I have to double check, but I'm I'm a vote. I'm rooting for Morocco and the little guys. But there you go. Well, Phil, um, I appreciate you being able to do, uh help me vent today about the whole Bogarts thing and no uh, chat about all of our lovely teams with all the different things they got in in their land, and um, we hope we get a chance to talk before around the holidays. But if we don't, we wish you all a happy holidays. And best for 2020. Happy New Year. Yeah. Happy New Year. All right. Take it easy, guys. Thanks again. We'll see you all soon.